Andre. I need to fix y'all faces. We got CB3 in Arizona. Y'all tripping. We got Chris Paul in Phoenix. Chris All right. Paul in Phoenix. <laughs> fix y'all faces. We got Vinny Goodwill, our third brother from another. What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm I'm uh, in, enjoying the day. How y'all doing? No complaints. Awesome. No complaints whatsoever. Uh, it's That's been a, a great crazy shirt, week. man. It is a good shirt. It's a good it's a good shirt day. It's been a crazy week in the NBA in particular. Um, but so we got we got a lot to cover with you. You got Kyrie news today. We got uh, Paul George has, has said some stuff. But I want to go back to the big to the biggest story of the week, which is the John Wall uh, Russell Westbrook trade. You probably saw, you probably were shocked when it when it happened because you know you got your your ear to the streets on these things. But what did you think about the trade in general when it first happened? You know how you you know you move to a house and you've been there for a minute and you just want to move some stuff around. You just want to move a couch, just to move a chair. It don't really change the aesthetic of the house. It don't change anything. Like, but you're just moving some stuff around. That's what I feel like the Wizards did. It's like, you know what? I got a problem here. You got a problem here. Let's just exchange my problem for your problem. I know that your problem ain't the solution to my problem, and my problem ain't the solution to yours, <laughs> but we just going to do some moving around just to say that we did something. Like, can you tell me that Houston is markedly better or that Washington is markedly better? Like, I get it, but to me, it signifies the fact that both of these dudes, the fact that they could only be traded for each other, and that a few teams needed championship level point guards, and nobody made a call for Russell Westbrook or John Wall just to see. I mean, the, Milwaukee is desperate, right? To keep Giannis, they're desperate to keep their star. Even if he ain't the fit, you go and try to make a couple calls. Same thing with the Clippers. The Clippers got all types of issues, and they're like, you know what? We don't want Russell Westbrook or John Wall over here. We straight. So to me, I would think that that's a signal that neither one of these dudes are exactly where we think they are. They're just a couple of names. But you know what, Vinny? Uh, look, Washington got the better player, and Houston winds up with the better uh, spiritual situation because it seems like James Harden just wanted, Har uh, that wanted Westbrook out of there, that something was going on there. So you say it's moving the furniture around, but in this case... Just a different personality is what Houston needed. So I think it was a little more significant than you making it out to be. I got no, because doesn't James Harden still want out? Well, oh, I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. Doesn't James Harden still I, want out? Yeah. I don't see how this is. I don't see how this changes. I don't see how this changes anything. Like, okay, if James Harden is still there, let's just say James Harden magically does not want his jersey retired in a place other than the strip club in Houston. And he's just like, you know what? Cool. I'm going to stay here and we just going to kick it here. All right. All right. Cool. Let, let's just, let's just take that for that face value. You mean to tell me that he's like, you know what? Trade my boy, Russell Westbrook. After he said, you know what? I can't stand Chris Paul trade him. At some point, when is James Harden going to look at it and say, you know what? Maybe I'm hard to play with as opposed to just saying, you know what? We're going to make a real change here. And John Wall, think about it. A guy who hasn't played in two full seasons, essentially. He's played in maybe 70-some games over the past two years. We haven't seen him play. He's coming off an Achilles and another foot injury. You mean to tell me, Michael Holly, that this is a proactive move on the part of the Houston Rockets to try to keep James Harden? Like, at some point, do you just stop listening to this dude? Because he's taking you all down all types of bad roads. Like, tell me how to make this make sense to me. It's funny you say that because yesterday I joked, uh, I called James Harden the NBA's thought because like he running through everybody. <laughs> like I mean, he he he, go he going through literally every star possible. Which you know to that end, and I, and I saw the Athletic did a, a deep dive on the dysfunction. He's a basketball Kardashian in Houston, and <laughs> he did a deep dive <laughs> on the dysfunction in Houston. The Athletic did, and it talked about how Russell Westbrook felt like he was scapegoated. And, I, and honestly, I find it hard to believe. Now, while Russell does have a reputation uh, from a basketball standpoint in, in particular of being difficult to play with because he's so ball dominant, we know about that. But how, if, if you're in Houston and everything goes through James Harden as an organization and he's had all these different co-stars and everybody saw Russell play great basketball and then come back from COVID 
and hurt in the bubble, rushed back. I, I find it hard to believe that people would really try to scapegoat Russell Westbrook and make him to blame for the Rockets falling short again. It feels like this whole offseason really has been a referendum on James Harden, right, Benny? It should be. I mean, because th- th- I think Russell Westbrook feels this way for these reasons. If you look at it, if you reading the story and understand the way that that team dynamic when he was talking about, hey, we need to call team meetings to hold guys accountable and everything else. And he's trying to do that. And uh, imagine being in a meeting and you're trying to get everybody on the same page. Like, imagine we're all in some warm world of normalcy. We could be in the same room with each other. And you're trying to hold people accountable and you're trying to do all these different things. And everybody's looking at you with a blank face. Like, no, we don't do that here we don't call out james harden and tell him hey why don't you move to different parts of the floor why don't you play better defense why don't you do these different things so if you're not getting the response that you're used to and i'm not saying that the russell westbrook way or the russell westbrook culture is the best culture the way to do things because i felt like in oklahoma city that it, everything funneled to him and there wasn't a lot of air for anybody else on the floor but for him of all people to say you know what something's off here that just let you <laughs> further no further how no jacked up, <laughs> how jacked up this all is if russell that's that's like the the student who's getting in, in trouble for behavior issues point to another kid and be like man he bad as hell <laughs> <laughs> can't that's take him nowhere that's what this um, is <laughs> But wait, all right, so wait, I want to stay in Houston, though, because to your point about James Harden still wanting to, to, uh, to get up out of Dodge and, and maybe go to Brooklyn and play with uh, uh, Kyrie and KD. So Steven Silas had some interesting comments yesterday. I'm sure you heard him, Vinny. Talking about he, get, he giving James Harden uh, his space. Uh, I think we got the sound of that, Gary. Let's roll that sound from Steven Silas. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get with the sound. Steven Silas. <laughs> when stuff like this kind of happens, where there's a little indecision and stuff going on, I, I kind of take a step back and allow guys some, some space. So from my perspective, my communication has been, I'm giving you space. And that's kind of where it's been as far as my um, communication with him. And, uh, you know, guys like that need that. They, they need to figure it out and, and they need to, they don't need someone banging on them all the time to um, kind of figure out where they're at and, and, and whatnot. Respectfully, respectfully. Yeah. Man. I don't know Steve yeah, Stiles, but respectfully. Like say, dog, like, like you in or you out? Like we grown men here. Like I'm not, I'm not chasing nobody, man. I'm too old for that. Like, I, got, I ain't got time to be trying to give you your space. Like, we married. We don't go together. Like, we ain't seeing other people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you don't get space when you're under contract and you're the face of the franchise. My, Vinny, I don't, Michael, Vinny, I don't see a middle ground. It's like either you are, we are trading you or we're not trading you. But if we're not trading you, you need to have your ass home at night. You know, love should have brought you home last night. Like, wait, I ain't got time to be chasing you. Like, let me, let me give you your space. Like, space for what? To do what? To consider what? Like, what are, you, what are we doing here? As a perfect segue from the love should have brought you home, he is one step away from walking from Marcus Graham, walking through the office <laughs> after breaking up with Jacqueline. And everybody looking at him sideways like, man, you're the sucker. Because that's how he <laughs> sounds like right now. He sounds like the dude that doesn't know that he's been broken up with yet. And everybody knows that his business is out in the streets. And the thing is, we know nothing about Steven Silas. So right now, he just looks like the mark. When he says, man, you give somebody some time and and he started rubbing his chest. I'm like, do you got indigestion there, brother? You all right? You feeling okay, dude? Imagine being waiting all this time, 20 plus years, 50, 11 years to get a head coaching job. And James Harden goes off and plays you for the food in front of everybody. No respect at all. Like a Jay-Z line. You better check a dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. You know, I, I think I think for Steven Silas and the and the Rockets, they're in a tough space because what they want to do is trade him, I'm sure. Or no, they or or they, no, they, they want to definitely trade him or definitely keep him. But there's no, there's nothing you can do because if you say we want to trade him. Now, now you've given up all your leverage. Uh, you definitely keep him, but he's still not listening to you. 
So you're kind of in a tough space, like publicly. That what kind of message are you sending publicly? What I wouldn't say, though, if I'm Stephen Silas, is I'm giving him space because that's my communication style. Well, that's bad communication. I don't know. If, if, if Michael Smith and Vinny Goodwill, if you guys, both of you, if you are giving me space and I don't hear from you, how do I know that you're giving me space? How much am I reading your minds? How do I know that? That is a bad what? communication technique. Well, here's the thing. He's not coming in as a guy who was an assistant with that team. He's walking into mm. a set of circumstances and ideals that were set long before he got here. So he's walking in there saying, James Harden is in charge, and you're working for Tillman Fertitta. And this is how we deal with things here with James Harden being in charge. You don't have a choice other than to play and look like the fool because everybody else has played and looked like the fool for James Harden. James Harden wanted Chris Paul up out of there. Chris Paul got up out of there. Daryl Morey couldn't take it anymore. Daryl Morey was up out of there. Same with Mike D'Antoni. Everything that has been run by that franchise has been run that way because James Harden wanted it that way. And if you're the new coach and the new black coach in there working for Tillman Fertitta, I need not tell you guys what type of walking you have to tread on to ensure that you stay employed beyond, let's say, the next three to four months. I wonder if Harden uh, is upset because Westbrook got his way. They, if they're both disgruntled and they want it out, even though he didn't want Westbrook, they found a way to get Westbrook out of Dodge. And Harden's like, man, what about me? I'm trying to go to Brooklyn. But, you, but just before we hit the break, though, Vinny, real quick, I want to go back to the other side of this trade. There were, there were multiple teams, multiple layers, because it's not just getting John Wall and what it means for James Harden's future in Houston. It's also, you know, the better and at least the healthier player is Russell Westbrook, flaws and, and all. better. Going to Washington... Yeah, no, no, but I'm saying, you know, he's better and he's healthier. Um, no question about it. That's why the first-round pick went back. What, what do you think this means in the short term for Washington's potential to be a play-in, if not a potential playoff team in the Eastern Conference with Scott Brooks? And does Bradley Beal fit with Russell Westbrook so well that Beal sticks around, or is he about to be one and done uh, in D Not one and done, but is he about to be up out of D.C. after this season? Look, the Washington Wizards have been a part of my life since I started watching NBA basketball. They've never won 50 games. I don't think they've ever won. I think they won one playoff series. You telling me that the team can't get right, decide if they're going to get it right by bringing in Russell Westbrook on a team coach by Scott Brooks? I need y'all to tell me what fantasy world we live in where that is the solution to the problem for the franchise that has never gotten it right, that will probably never get it right, all of a sudden getting with the player that can't get it right, and all of a sudden That's they're a making beautiful music roster, together. Though. That's a good looking little roster though. Wait a second. I get wait. I know I know we're talking about a, a, a checkered past to be kind, but that's a good looking little roster though. And here's what they didn't have last year, all of last year. John Wall. Now they at least got a guy that's gonna show up and play in Russell. And not, and not that you know, John Wall blood is Achilles, but you understand what I'm saying? I say show up and play. <coughs> they got a guy that's there, available. Best avail ability is availability. They have they've added Russell Westbrook when they didn't have John Wall. So they they're better immediately just by getting Westbrook than they were. Don't answer. I me. mean, they got some shooters around him. Mike, Vin, uh, I don't know. Mike, we spent a lot of time this week talking about all the money that the Lakers, rightfully so, uh, gave LeBron James uh, and Anthony Davis. A couple of extensions. $85 million for the King. $190 over five uh, for Anthony Davis. Some talk coming out of L.A. Michael Holly, I don't know if you saw this. Uh, Jared Dudley talking about he's expecting A.D., to make a uh, an MVP push this year. LeBron ain't trying to hey. not win another one, but what you think about that? Uh, well, this is what I think about it. Wasn't he in the MVP convert? He should have been. I know he wasn't. It came down to Giannis and LeBron. But if you look at Anthony Davis' season last year, that's an MVP caliber season. And, and the only reason we didn't say it is because he's playing on the same team as LeBron. But I, Anthony Davis has had, if you look at his career, I know I've switched on this. I've totally switched on it, Mike, uh, and I own it. But if you look at some of the uh, accomplishments throughout his career, he's had MVP seasons before. And for them to get to that point that I talked about where I said the Lakers extend contracts and windows, if they're going to continue uh, the mini dynasty that I think they can have and many meaning like two or three championships, in a four-year span, something like that. 
Anthony Davis will have to be the MVP for that to happen. Vinny, do you do, can he win an MVP with the best player in the world on his team? Like you, do you have a vote? You have a vote, right, Vinny? Don't you have a vote? Yep, I have a vote. So I mean, you, you tell me. You have, you yeah. have to, Mike. You got to, you, you got to show me a world where LeBron James isn't the driving force on any team that he's played on and willingly cedes that space. Because I remember. Cleveland, he said, you know, I'm going to be handing off a little bit more to Kyrie Irving this year. And I know we're going to get to Kyrie and some of his nonsense in a minute, but <laughs> I don't see a world where LeBron, who has, who is as aware of his place in history, aware of his standing in theater, in terms of basketball theater, I don't see him taking a place where he willingly cedes that even to someone like Anthony Davis, because I don't think Anthony Davis has this dominant personality where he's going to say, this is now mine. And LeBron says, you know what you write is yours. But I do agree that for this to happen, there has to be some sort of magic Kareem passing of the torch to maximize what they have better because the guy who led them in scoring, rebound, field goal percentage, three-point shooting, blocks, steals, and free throw shooting last year was not LeBron James, it was Anthony Davis. So the question is, is Anthony Davis already the best player on that team? Oh, okay. Oh, now you're getting, you know what? Vinny getting warmed up. Vinny getting warmed up for Friday. You know, he's just like, let me try to, let me just talk. Hey, I know what you're look, doing. Hey, let me just I, I, get this. Look, okay. He is, uh, hey, he call, look, he, we don't call him the microwave for nothing. We don't stay call him the microwave for nothing. Vinny come out shooting. Vinny, you, 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 are not a, you are not a bench player. You just don't start. You don't, you just don't start for brother from another, but you you a scorer. You come, you, you come out scoring with these things. Um, staying in L.A. though, man, this Clippers drama. Woo. We talked about it earlier this week. Uh, the Athletic man. unloaded on the Clippers and the special treatment, the preferential treatment, and, and uh, that Kyrie, uh, excuse me, uh, Kawhi Leonard has been getting uh, with that organization. And, and Mike, I don't think I said this to you, Michael. I had Vinny's voice in my head. Because I feel like when they were collapsing against the Nuggets, no, I'm serious. I feel like when they were collapsing against the Nuggets, you were on the show talking about the lack of leadership on the floor. I, I, I feel like you spoke to that. Uh, and then, by the way, I don't know if y'all saw this, Paul George, Michael, you see this? Paul George today said he wants to retire a Clipper. Just come on, whatever that's worth. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but Vin, Man. read that athletic story and all the dirty laundry. He's gone at the deadline. Like they trade him at the deadline. <laughs> I, it just, but really, it just kind of feels like you know that they don't have a fighting chance given the chemistry issues that they had last year, and then I, I don't know how they would have fixed it this year just by switching out the coach. Well, you didn't just switch out the coach. Montrez Harrell isn't there anymore, and depending on who you talk to around the league, maybe Patrick Beverly can be had, maybe Lou Williams can be had, and my thing is this: Kawhi Leonard and Paul George receiving special treatment like make them bad or anything like you're going to push the limit as far as you can on if somebody tells you you can be late and you ain't got to practice or you ain't got to come to work yeah. or you play when you want to play and they say yes then that ain't yeah. necessarily on you at this point it's incumbent upon Kawhi to say okay you know what if I'm going to be the de facto leader of this team, if, if this is my organization, this is my franchise, then I have to see and be aware of what this looks like to everybody else. And if that's the case, then I have to put some guardrails on my own sort of special mm -hmm. treatment. Now, ha now, do does he have the self-discipline to do that? I don't, I'm not saying I don't, I'm not sure, but I don't know who necessarily does if you give them all that freedom. I think their problem is just they don't have a point guard. And they didn't go out and get a point guard, and maybe they will at the trade deadline. But to me, I still look at them as being deep enough and good enough to compete with the Lakers. The problem is the Lakers got better. And the problem is you yeah. have far more questions than answers. And look, Paul George can want to retire a Clipper. I thought he retired in game five of the Western Conference semifinals. I don't remember seeing it since. Ooh. Ooh. Rim shot. Wait, but, but, but just, I, I'm going to jump back in on one thing, though. There's preferential treatment. And listen, this is all report reports, but then there's the stuff about, you know, his own locker room space and how it rubbed people the wrong way, even if it meant that, you know, the cheerleaders, you know, weren't able to use the bathroom or, or excuse me, I should say female staff weren't able to use the bathroom, late flights, missing practice, canceling practice, you know, uh, asking in and out of games or refusing to go into games. That's next level special, special uh, preferential treatment, special treatment, excuse me, combined words. And I look at not just Doc Rivers, Michael, but like I mentioned, that's Steve Ballmer. That's organizational. 
You know, they were just waiting right. for Thirsty to get Kawhi Leonard there. And Paul George ain't earned that kind of special uh, truck. I can't speak today. Special, special treatment. treatment. I got you. Yeah. But I'm with you. You know what, Mike and Vinny, uh, I, and just hearing all these reports, I'm glad you uh, referenced them all, Mike, because it's just so much of the, all these all these little whispers and innuendo and, hey, what do you think about that? And people just leave it out there for you to interpret. I, I was offended by two things here. One, that they went in on our nation's second black president. That would be Glenn Doc Rivers. And I didn't appreciate that at all. That's my president. That's my president. Leave him alone. And the other thing is, look, if you're, if you, if you're Paul George and you're Kawhi, Vinny, and you're a combined 10 for 38 in a game seven, and you're a, one, of, one guy is a multiple finals MVP and the other guy thinks that he's, a, he's a great player, I don't want to hear anything you have to say. You were 10 for 38 in game seven. It ain't about ORIQ and our accountability. You didn't get the job done, and that's a big reason why y'all lost to uh, uh, the, the Denver Nuggets and blew a 3-1 lead. There's got to be some responsibility taken by everybody. And I was a person, say this, I was a person based off of Kawhi's 16 playoff run that said Kawhi Leonard is the best player in basketball. Until proven otherwise, until Kevin mm. Durant, that I was saying up until the that Kawhi Leonard was the best player in basketball because of what he does on both ends of the floor. He right. clearly was not as engaged on both ends of the floor, especially toward the end of that series. He did not. He started to look a little bit on the heavier side, like weight-wise. I know a lot of that is muscle and everything else, but I won't say the decline has happened, but that's the first real, if you think about it, blemish on Kawhi because that situation with the Spurs, that felt like that was a lot of mystery that we didn't know about. You know what I mean? Like, there was no real blame because there was only so much information that we knew about. This is the first thing that's going to stick to him a little bit, and he's going to have to, I'm going to say, redeem himself because he's a two-time Finals MVP, and he's a made right. man, but this is something that he's going to have to rebound from, and organizationally, you got to think, Doc Rivers is Doc Rivers and Paul George have a bit of a personal relationship there. And there have not, uh -huh. there's been more than one person around the NBA that has suggested to me, hey, look, they're both human. You can't tell me that these things don't play into it at some point. Uh -huh. Not necessarily when things are going good or when things are going bad, but when you have to give a player the benefit of the doubt. Or if a player has to give the coach the benefit of the doubt, do they lean on that side? And what I saw in the last three games of that series were players who did not give each other the benefit of the doubt. And a coach who said, you know what? I'm done with y'all. And not I'm done with y'all as if I'm giving up on y'all, but y'all have made this bed. Y'all figure it out. We've seen coaches do that. We've seen Phil Jackson do that with the Lakers in, in Portland when they were down 17 yeah. in that game seven. And he said, I'll see y'all next summer. You know, I'll see you next fall. And they, made, and they made that turnaround. So it's not that Doc was washing his hands of it, but at some point, they're all adults out there. Y'all grown men. Y'all get yourselves Word. into this. Get yourselves out of this. And there's been a lack of accountability, I felt like, from the beginning there because, because from people like me, I said they're going to get it together when they, when they have to. I gave them a certain yeah. level of grace that they hadn't necessarily they earned. They, they, <laughs> had, they hadn't earned it. And now they got yeah. – look, look, man. Look, look Mike. I'm sure you've done it just like I have. Sometimes you dated a woman that was so fine. You gave her every benefit of the doubt. You gave her every excuse of course, that was possible. Of course. And then when you saw in the light, you was like, you know what? This is this is my fault. I and I am an wow. enabler. I wow. completely they, enabled they, they, this they, human they, being. They were, they were simping. They were simping on the front end when it was firing Bruce. Bo was uh, who was it? Bruce Bowen. When it was firing, Bruce him Bowen, criticizing firing. before yep. he even got there. Kawhi, yep. before he even got there, it was simping. It was simping. So um, we got to get to uh, to Kyrie Irving, man. Um, he spoke to. <laughs> Do we have to? He didn't speak to the media. He issued a statement. Uh, he went. The, he went the old fashioned route. Uh, he addressed the, the media. Route, did not speak to the media. He addressed the media. Yeah, one form or another. Uh, do we have that? Uh, let's uh, let's let's show you a little bit of, of, of what he had to say. COVID nineteen has impacted us all in many ways. So I pray for the safety and health of our communities domestically and abroad. I am truly excited for the season to start, and I'm also praying that everyone remains safe and healthy throughout this journey. Instead of speaking to the media today, I am issuing this statement to ensure that my message is conveyed properly. Uh oh. 
I'm committed to show up, work every day, ready to have fun, compete, perform, and win championships. Alongside my teammates and colleagues in the Nets organization, my goal this season is to let my work on and off the court speak for itself. Life hit differently this year, and it requires us, it requires me to move differently. So this is the beginning of that change. Okay. Um, all right. I, I, I guess I get it. Mike, Vinny, Mike, look, Mike thinks this is doomed to, 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 to for disaster anyway. You are not feeling this Brooklyn experiment to begin with. So, Mike, start it off. What's your, how you process but, that? Okay, now, I reserve the right. Once again, what did I say? I reserve the right to be stupid. I said that before. I reserve the right to change my mind. As the facts change, so but, your opinion. Yeah. But my first reading of the reading, like literal reading of this, fellas, is that I understand. This is actually growth from Kyrie Irving because he has, now what he didn't put in the statement, I'm just going to just read something into it. He has a knack for saying too much. You know, like some people, you give them like the notes, say, you're going to go in front of the media, you're going to say this, this, and this. Here are three points. You go ahead and do it. And they go in there and they give you seven things. They, tell, they say too much. I'm like, oh, man, why'd you do that? We talked about this beforehand. <laughs> That's what he usually does. In this case... He's not letting any of that other stuff. You're not going to twist me up. I'm going to say, this is what I want to say. This is all I want to say. Mm. And I'm going to focus on the season. I, I think it's actually good because he's so sensitive. And, and Durant, they're so sensitive. This is the way to do it. This is, I, I, talk, I really don't you hate about, it. You talk about reading into things. So, okay, you read between the lines. I'm just reading Vinny's face and body language, and I'm amused. Vinny ain't even said a word yet. <laughs> I'm picking up some vibes from Vinny. Go ahead, Vin. <laughs> Vinny feels some just, kind of way about let's it. Let's just dinner, like, and let's discuss, discuss our workload. Just our workload <laughs> over a deal. You got to help alone. Okay, if you are a grown man and you cannot control the statements that you say in front of the big, bad media across a Zoom teleconference, now, I don't think Kyrie Irving is a bad guy. I think Kyrie Irving fancies himself to be a little bit smarter than what he is and fancies the media to be a little too simplistic. He puts us in the box when he claims that we put him in a box. I find that rather amusing. So whether Kyrie Irving doesn't talk to the media for the rest of the year, and this is the beginning of that change, and you guys can't twist my words, it wasn't the media that said, we don't need a coach. Jack Bond can be the coach one day. I can be the coach one day. Like, that wasn't the media that said that. That was and on a podcast. <laughs> that, your words, not the quotes, not anything. And for me, it's about guys having to take responsibility. Like, you are a grown man. You are doing great work. He's done great work as far as what he was doing in terms of social justice, with what he was doing with the WNBA. And we can put all those things together and say that, Kyrie Irving is a quality human being, but a lot of times he sticks his foot in his mouth. It's not that he says too much. Sometimes he just says dumb stuff that is worthy of <laughs> scrutiny. And I don't think we have to necessarily <laughs> give him an excuse for saying dumb stuff. Sometimes you think you are a little too smart. And when people call you out on it, then all of a sudden, well, y'all know I didn't mean it like that. Y'all just twisting my words. You ever had a friend that was a little too smart? And you'd be like, you're, you're a C student, be a C student. Like, that's I'm not saying Kyrie's a C student. He is a brilliant basketball player. He has a big heart. He thinks completely different ways. But nobody told him to say that the flat. Nobody told him to say that, you know, poop is like the white ball, knocking the black ball off of the face of the earth. You know what I'm saying? Like, Kyrie pushes on doors that says pool and blames the door. That ain't our fault. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, since you're dropping bars on the way out, uh, we were texted earlier. We got to celebrate uh, or recognize Jay Z's birthday uh, is today. Uh, you know, I've been told that you can't have a credible top five without Jay Z. Sorry, he's not in my personal top five, but there's no denying what the man has done and continues to do. Uh, throughout the industry and the culture at large. So you want to uh, give Jay-Z some flowers on your way out, Benny Goodwill? Can y'all give me some flowers? It's my birthday, too. Y'all want me giving flowers to another grown man when, Today? It's my, when it's my born day? Today. Oh, man. Bro, you whack for that. Dog, you whack for that. No, wait, wait. First of all, okay. Happy birthday, Vinny Goodwill. I can't... Mike, thank you, Mike. How Happy you birthday. Bury that lead? 
Hey, but wait, that is, like, it ain't like I ain't talked to you today. Say, dog, like, bro, it ain't like I'm, now you making me feel bad. You, I we, ain't when know we talked last week, I got said, enough stuff we, to. Why? When we talked last week, when we talked last week, you you asked me, and I told you, yeah, my birthday. Bro, Michael, will you tell this dude I can't remember what people tell me this morning? That's like, true. Vinny, that's true. I, Vinny, <laughs> Vinny, bro, I got enough stuff going on keep, in my head. You gotta keep texting him. You gotta keep bro, texting him. Texting the same thing. I'm thinking we about to talk about reasonable doubt. I thought we were about to talk about the blueprint, black album in my lifetime. And and I asked you on text. I said, say, bro, what else you want to talk about today? He's like, it's Jay Z's birthday. How much of a narcissist? How much of a birthday. narcissist would I be? And I'm be like, yeah, what y'all want to talk about? Well, I say, yeah, let's talk about my birthday on y'all show. Like, how? Like, come on now. I ain't, I ain't that much in hey, love with myself. Gary, change it to rap icon <laughs> mogul Vinny Goodwill. Happy birthday, cousin Vinny. <laughs> 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 but if you want my, my top three Jay-Z rap albums, it's Reasonable Doubt, Blueprint, Black Album. The first two are classics. The third is a little bit, you know, it's got too many too many thuds. There you go. Okay. But no, but I mean, you know, what are you doing? I mean, we're in a pandemic. What are you doing for your birthday, man? Like, happy birthday. I, first of all, thank you yeah. for blessing the show, giving us the gift of on your, your brilliance. On Extra your birthday. Extra time on your birthday. Some people I know... <laughs> Are spending their don't want to come oh. on our show. I'm not gonna say no name. Oh, come on. Don't want to come on our show on their birthday because they're busy. I ain't gonna put his business in the street. I ain't gonna put it. I'm just okay, gonna, I'm don't gonna do that. But gonna, that's I'm, amazing. Yeah. But point B, I know yeah, what you're talking about. That's being, an amazing story. <laughs> the fact that you're here <laughs> speaks volumes of this relationship. So what are you what you doing today, man? What's going on? What you got planned? You said it earlier. We're in the middle of a pandemic. I feel like 2020 has been one long ass 40 degree day. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm chilling. I might have I might have a nice a nice beverage, either a nice red wine or a nice cognac. You know, have a nice dinner, and and that that's kind of that's kind of it. I'm on the clock. The NBA schedule just got released. Kyrie Irving just said something silly. Paul George just went Paul George on everybody. Like you know, I just had to push the vacation. Them back a little bit. I'll, you know, I'm gonna go to y'all for for recommendations because I'm sure Mike them been everywhere from San Tropez to Bora Bora. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for watching, brother from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave, and be sure to watch us three to five p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.